And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are back f from last week at least. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I apologize for the lighting situation. One of our major uh, high spectrum, uh, I mean full spectrum daylight bulbs in our office. Uh, studio office is out. I tried to see if I can get it going, but no dice. It's out. So you got to make do with what you have. So if you thought we were a uh, very grassroots looking uh, progressive talk show before, can't get more, you know, down home and humble grassroots revolution than this. You know, uh, we don't have the state of the art facilities that some of these people, I don't know where the fuck they get their money from, these young people that uh, broadcast uh, uh, progressively uh, on the internet. Um, they might stream or they might be pre-recorded they're definitely on YouTube uh, you know you have Sank of the Young Turks and but then you have all these offshoot spin-offs all these spin-off people these young kids they all they're all like scrawny funny looking pencil neck geeks with high-pitched voices you have all these kids uh, very geeky looking uh, trying to do what Sank, I think his last name is Uger, what Sank Uger is doing on the Young Turks. You know, the Sank is, is an older gentleman and, uh, you know, he's the man, he's a progressive warrior. Um, but there's a lot of spin-offs and they all have this state-of-the-art studio with the images in the background and uh, I think it's the same I think Jesse Ventura has the same setup over on Aura TV with his uh, Off the Grid show. You know, it, they just have off the... Off the Grid show? I only see a background. Nah, he has the I background, that, so. you know, he can have a waving flag behind him or he can put, um, uh, you know, if he's, he's talking if he's talking a, a, with his producer, if he's talking about an issue and the issue is connected to an article uh, to you know writ uh, printed statements photographs the photograph and the article comes in a split second he's got a blue screen he goes from goes from Jesse to the article in, in a nanosecond and then back to Jesse again in other words he has the funding to do that we're just down home and humble we we are we are about content even though I'm proud that I have the uh, V for Vendetta, Mr. Anonymous face over here. All right, I will get going. Speaking of content, seven bells for content. Hooray for content. And, um, oh, all right, I have plenty of life for reading. Oh, gee. There's never a week that goes by where, you know, we just have 
wonderful, happy things to say because there's always new material in the United States. In the oh, I'm sorry, in the the uh, corporate oligarch fascist states of America, the rigged system. There's, there's never anything jolly to talk about, especially not lately. Chicago's Pride and Joy, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh, announced uh, that he's supporting, uh, he's endorsing Hillary Clinton, mm. and claims that you can trust Hillary Clinton. Really, Jesse, you can trust Hillary Clinton. I to find that. Trust her to do what? Yeah. If Maybe he's talking to all the... Uh, the top one percent uh, mega rich people. That's what he's doing. When he's, signal. You can trust Hillary. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Jesse Jackson, uh, my answer to you is that who was uh, marching with uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and yourself in the civil rights movement of the early 1960s was uh, was it anybody related to uh, Hillary Rodham or or her husband Bill Clinton? No. I say no. It's it's a it, it's a Bernie. it's a puffy, gray-haired gentleman from uh, a senator from Burlington, Vermont. Bernie Sanders was marching with you guys. Bingo. Bingo. Gee, how how, how quickly they forget. Oh, or how quickly they become immersed. In the status quo. Yeah, right. They like don't want uh, to be ostracized. Like Elizabeth Warren, she uh, she pretends to be like almost like Bernie Sanders' right hand person, best buddies, and she goes on a talk show and says she likes <laughs> you know she's supporting Bernie Sanders. Then all of a sudden, she switches her allegiance to Hillary Clinton. She, she, she has chosen the establishment, establishment politics, over the very people that supported her and voted for her in Massachusetts, and um, the whole progressive uh, grassroots revolution movement. She, she has dumped all of that for the establishment. Nice going. Nice going there, uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, we're, we're discussing uh, the inductees into this week's Chisler's Hall of Shame. We had Jesse Jackson, who forgot all about what Bernie did during the Civil Rights Movement, uh, while a young Hillary Rodham was campaigning for Republican uh, uh, Barry Goldwater of Arizona, and... The Goldwater girl. And locally, I believe in Arkansas, or one of the neighboring states, a young uh, attorney, Hillary Rodham, was representing a cold-blooded, uh, a pedophile, a rapist. Mm. What he, what they did, I think there was more than one. I think I could be wrong. To that young, a 12-year-old uh, female who was now 50 years old, and telling the entire story mm -hmm. about how a young attorney, Hillary Rodham, ruined her life and lied. Mm. Okay, so while Hillary was doing that, Bernie was marching with you guys, African Americans fighting for civil rights. Uh, the many, many uh, African Americans today have forgotten all about that mm -hmm. and have uh, endorsed Hillary Clinton. Then you have another surprise. The Teamsters Union announced that they are, they are endorsing Hillary Clinton also. Uh, excuse me, uh, AFL-CIO, AFL which I believe is the correct pronunciation, abbreviation. Um, who marched with uh, workers on strike? Was it ever Hillary Clinton? I don't think so. Not if there wasn't a TV crew and photographers on hand. You mean a, a big photo op for That's her? That's correct. It was Bernie Sanders who quickly and eagerly joined in on the picket line or marched with workers that were on strike. 
the man uh, you have decided not to endorse, I mean the candidate, it was, it's Bernie who is always seen on the picket line with strike workers, striking workers, striking. Interesting. Well, there's no doubt about it. Um, I have confirmed that even internet news media is now occasionally lying. Mm -hmm. There are occasionally. Uh, there are. There are. I'm, ta I'm not talking about the preposterous, really? insane. You know paranoid, far-out, you know, articles. I'm talking about, like, uh, articles about uh, voter fraud, the rigged system, Hillary Clinton, DNC, what Republicans, you know, everything that's going on, you have, now you have a mixture of true uh, articles that hit hard, mixed in with articles that look like they were written by the oligarch themselves, so now the Probably the were. the lying huh? Probably were. Alec writes the uh, the bills for the senators and the Congress yeah. people. But you, but 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 originally they were mostly they mostly had control of mainstream media. You, you know, usually people got oh, well. the real deep truth from the internet. But now the internet has those same the same misinformation. Uh, trying to discourage. Well, they tried to do away with net neutrality, and they've done a pretty damn good job. Right, because because for some reason, the obsession with greed it, it seems to be so obsessively strong that they are really determined to enslave you, we the people, and to and to have us walk around. Like uh, 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 brainwashed lemmings, they they uh, uh, greed. And we're talking about multi-billionaires. It's not a, apparently, you know, Hillary's no spring chicken, and she she still does not have enough money. <laughs> you know, she made eleven uh, hundred and eleven million last year, or this year. She's an old bag, and she's still not wealthy enough, just like with the Koch brothers, and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're not wealthy enough. Never enough. Well, uh, the Waltons. It's a Walton a family, George, yeah. so George Soros, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, um, 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 Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch. You know, these people. Yeah. You know. Um, Never enough. Yeah. But don't forget, never enough. Every time, what people don't grasp, every time one of those guys, yeah, gets more money, we lose it. The well, economy is a balanced affair. It's supposed to be a balanced affair. Like like a, like an productivity goes up, wages are supposed to go up. Like like a like a certified public accountant doing an audit and balancing the yeah. books. But what has happened in the last uh, 25, 30 years, profit margin has been going up, productivity has been going up, and wages have not. So we don't have a balanced economy. Except the big kahuna wage, the CEO's Yes, salary. that's what I just said. Yeah. The profit margins go up. They are making more profits now than ever at any time. Right. In this world, and the prosperity since of, the dinosaurs, and the prosperity of corporate America always seems seems to be pooling at the top, with no trickling down. You're lucky if it drips down. You're it lucky. doesn't drip down. It doesn't trickle down. I just uh, I just told you. Once they get it, we lose it. Right. Okay. Where There's the, no trickle down. The, the little guy. The little guy goes more and more in the red. Yes, because we or we have to make it up what they don't pay. I mean, I mean, for for an average family to have to work, let's say, I'm talking about average Joe six packs. For let's say you're a couple, you for you got for you guys to work like 
two jobs and ju and still not have any surplus cash to actually be happy and enjoy life. Forget about the American dream. You're that's not going to get that. Happened. Yeah, I mean that's that is despicable in this country, where you turn around and you look at Scandinavian countries, Northern they Europe. They are communists. Well, they you, are communists. Well, they'll call them commies, but oh, they're, they're, they will they're really democratic that. socialism, but they'll call them commies. Yeah, but they they have lots of leisure time yeah. and sick days with pay and paternity and maternity leave with pay. Because people are more important to them. And a good well, big dollar. And a good welfare system. Okay. And a good and a good comfortable uh, retirement with dignity. And I think Norway is paying all of its citizens eight hundred dollars a month as a base salary just to just to just as a base I think they get something for the oil like Alaska does oh yeah well they oh they they, they the tax North them. Sea they have uh, oil coming from there them and Britain yeah. well they tax they the Scandinavian countries definitely tax their rich but they tax everybody but the but, but they get more but the companies are bad. not are not doing bad they're they're doing Nokia very, they're doing well not just them I well, mean in general they're yes they're, their economy moves along they're not perishing no no they're not okay uh, um you know um hey now based on the last thing I'm gonna say here um whether or not this is true if it's not if it's a lie send send us an email but I was reading an article online that claimed that only eight states in the United States allow write-in candidates will you know will allow you to write in a candidate New Jersey is one of them never heard of that yeah I don't know I don't know this could be this could be lying voter suppression. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, and it mentioned and it showed the eight states, and they're all in the um, south. No, none of them Red are in the states. south. No, they're the the some are in the Midwest, but oh. you know, northern Yankee territory, oh. and a few in the Midwest, and most of them are like uh, in the Northeast. And then the rest of the country doesn't allow write-ins, which sounds very strange to me. Yes, it does. I mean, it's your right to vote for whomever you want to vote for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, for a state to force you to uh, have allegiance to a political party doesn't sound too fair. That you have to be, you have to show allegiance to a major political party. Mm -hmm. But, just in case this uh, insanity is true, well, either way, Bernie may have to go with a Jill Stein over at the Green Party. He, he, he may, if he wants to continue the, the political grassroots revolution, uh, he may have to go mm -hmm. with an existing um, uh, independent party that is on the ballot in all 50 states which might be the Green Party. Uh, uh, Ralph Nader has, uh, was on the Green Party more than once, I think. I um, salute yeah. Ralph Nader for giving Bernie Sanders some very sound advice uh -huh. recently. I salute Ralph Nader, the great Ra Ralph Nader. Um, I will dedicate the show to him again because he's been giving he's Bernie... He's got an anniversary. He's giving Bernie some good advice. Unsafe at all, uh, any speed. First book. His first book? Really? Where he exposed that the... Uh, About time. The Corvair was a piece of shit. And uh, the cars were, uh, you know, from General Moses. Built, built, in, built in obsolescence? Not, not only that, they were just unsafe. Really? Yeah. Well, well I, you know the Pinto. I know the That's a great example of it. Uh, the Pinto that exploded when you hit yeah. it from behind. Yes, what man. about the Chevy Vega that ran hot? I had one. That ran hot. My mother had one. The the the, the dashboard was always hot. Ooh. 
you you could keep uh, breakfast warm on the dashboard. I, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it had to do with aluminum block. It was, it was Mine a lot of overheated them. once, and uh, ever since then, uh, I didn't get I didn't get a good four years out of it. I hey. gave it away. It was still working. Hey. But you know, I couldn't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> we, you know, um, the um, the light bulbs, the compact fluorescent light bulbs, when they first came out, they you you could actually get two or three years or so out of them, and I I have. Mm -hmm. But now they burn out just like the cheap uh, incandescent bulbs. They're they're everything made by corporate America manufactured of course in the, in China or Bangladesh wherever wherever they can get cheap labor or child labor it ha it has built in obsolescence in it or it's just designed to to burn out to blow you know how many appliances american made appliances uh, my sister had to throw away that 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 died prematurely. Ugh. You know, I'm talking about companies like Hamilton Beach. How Pro about toasters made of plastic? Proctor site. Oh, I Does showed. Does that make any sense? Remember that I showed it on one of our past yeah. programs. Yeah. The toaster that toasted itself. <laughs> the plastic melted. The plastic part on top of the toaster. I forgot what that was. And so I noticed uh, Proctor Silex, Hamilton Beach. This was so oh, the worst sunbeam. It was a sunbeam. Eh? Oh, there was a sunbeam on the toaster, all right. <laughs> right. It was left out in the sun. It melted. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. I hope, I hope that it's not true about the eight states only allowing write-ins for voting. I hope that's yeah. not true. But I, you know, I just had to say it. And uh, now. Um, you know who we are because you saw the introduction, and um, you know it's um, to you guys out there, you single guys out there. Uh, I noticed that you know a lot of guys, young guys, come to me and they complain about the girls and everything, and you know uh, the chicky poos, uh, and it's not just necessarily the millennial girls, but you know older. Women that are that are above millennials sometimes do it too. They'll meet somebody and like the second question out of their mouth would be like, "Well, what do you do? What do you do for a living?" It's really nobody's damn business what what a man or a woman's income is. If if you feel somebody is, is trying to size up your income for whatever reason, whether they want children and a family and they want you to be the sucker to go to to work long hours and pay for everything while they stay home whatever the reason you know uh, a, a Sash uh, Boyle told me in California they do the same thing they ask uh, they're even worse they ask what do you drive mm -hmm. they try to first they try to find out what you drive. and then they try to find out what you do for a living oh, yeah. well, you know what do you want? I had some uh, Asian woman one time, a Chinese woman, say to me, um, she she was asking me two or three times, well, what else do you do? You do anything else? You go, hey, ufa, as we used to say in Italian. What the fuck? You know, that, that's rude. That's rude. It's really nobody's fucking business what anybody has because you know why? No one owes anyone a damn thing. The only thing you have to do, gentlemen, is die and pay taxes. Unless you're part of the one, top 1%. Then you don't pay taxes. Then you don't have to pay taxes. Then well, you, you'll die. Yeah, yeah, but you look look how long it's taking the, the richest old geezers in the uh, world to croak. They're holding on, man. They keep on getting heart yeah, transplants. And, yeah, like Mr. Cheney. Yeah, and, and old man... Um, um, Old man Rothschild has had uh, more than one transplant, I think. Holy mackerel! Yeah, well, you do have to. The, you do have to take this damn drug, so your body doesn't reject, reject the organ. It, yes, of course. Well, why? Why? Of course. 
Your body Ooh. should your body should be logical. It's and somebody else's flesh. So what are you supposed to do? Drop dead? We are individuals. We are a, a you know an island onto ourselves. Oh, so the D, maybe the D, cells are concerned. Maybe it's the DNA of somebody else's heart or a kidney. You know the, the flesh, the whatever. The, it's 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 theirs. It's theirs. Not yours. Yeah, it's there. Now, if you, they if they take your DNA or stem cell or whatever, and they and, grow and they your heart. they do it. Don't get me wrong; they're already doing it, and they do it well, mm -hmm. and grow it in the laboratory or laboratory. In my laboratory, it's a welcome, labo it's a laboratory. It's a laboratory when you're doing something sinister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that if they put that organ in you, of course your body is going to accept it because it is like your mini me. It is. <laughs> It is grown from from your whatever DNA stem cells, mm -hmm. or as uh, what is the Archie Bunker? Well, growing a heart would probably be a very bad thing because it Why? has to have an action to it. Action Jackson. Well, of course it has to have action. So you know how will you do? Well, that? a kidney it has to have action. Well, when you hook it up. Yeah, but that that the kidney and the liver, they depend on your body activating them, but the heart. You try, are you trying to say that the electromagnetic energy of the human body is not what makes the heart life energy. contract? Move? No, it's it's electrical. It's yes. an in, it's an involuntary uh, uh, organ that. But you gotta have it make doesn't stop. Just think yeah, about that. Yeah, exactly. So how do you keep if you're growing it? How do you keep you know? Make it uh, well. You got. You got. You got to have. Uh, uh, you got to have the oxygen and nutrients in a in a, some kind of a plasma, in a liquid, like the like, going the, like the like the fetus has. Yeah. You have to approach it from that point of view. And unfor again. and unfortunately, you know? also like a tumor has, there are blood vessels that are that are set up by the the body to feed the tumor like it was a, a, a growing uh, fetus, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the tumor becomes like an entity, and, and then, you know, a foreign entity that don't belong yeah. there. But anyway, yes, then your body will accept it. But guess what? Growing your own organ in, the, in this laboratory is probably something only the wealthy can afford. Of course! Because you see how much the hospitals charge just for like a, a couple days stay. How, how much they... For chemo! They exploit and rip off the insurance companies and Medicare. Yeah. And they, they, did, they did it to my mother. She was in a hospital. She passed out. She was in a hospital. Of course they did every test known oh, to man. Oh, yeah. And they stretch the test out amongst like two or three days. In other words, they, when she was sedated, they could have done all the tests in one day when she was first there. They could have done it when she was in the ER. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that. Oh, we gotta, we gotta register and we gotta get her a room. And then uh, mm -hmm. the, the day two comes around. What did you do? Well, you know, uh, uh, we're letting the antibiotic, but she had a slight pneumonia. They let the antibiotic intravenously, you know, uh, go into her. Well, did you do any more tests? Oh, no, no, we want to do that tomorrow morning. Okay. Sure. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Run up the bill, run up the bill. You know what I mean? Worse than a five-star hotel, from what I understand. It's cheaper to stay at the Waldorf than at a hospital. <laughs> no, but do you, do you see how they milk it? How they, they stretch it out? You know, like like union ro uh, construction workers doing road, <laughs> doing road work on a highway? Don't come down on unions. No, no. What Don't I mean, what I mean is, what I'm trying to say is that people that milk something, well, that milk a system. Sometimes only one guy can do the, you know, what has to be done. So you got to stand around, wait your turn. Well, so that may be inter misinterpreted sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, medical. Being lazy. Well, medical. Well, or whatever. Let's stick to something uh, dishonest. Yeah. Like let's get this. The American let's stick medical to chemotherapy. 
which only works 3% at a time, which is exorbitant in price, which the doctors get kickbacks on. Well, don't, okay. the, don't the doctors make a little commission pushing certain pharmaceutical drugs? Absolutely. From their office? Absolutely. They get the, the young lady comes in there, the, uh, the drug rep, and she takes the doctor out to dinner. Hey, doc. And you know. You like my set here? You like my soon, double D's? Pretty soon the doctor's, you know, ordering uh, <laughs> a, uh, a uh, antibiotic, which is... Uh, out of out of the uh, fashion today. So, but so the young lady, so you the know. Young, young lady buys him a a couple dry martinis, That's and right. she wears a she shows a little. Oh yeah. She shows a little leg, a little cleavage. That's correct. Leave it to cleavage. Da 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 and before you know it, the doctor is ordering all kinds of pharma, like it was a candy store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's 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 take a look at something popular like Lipitor. A lot of people get Lipitor, Lipitor. Crestor, and the other ones. They want they were get, they were giving them my mother Lipitor in a hospital because they they assumed she might have had a mild stroke, even though they could not prove that she had a mild stroke. So based on an assumption, they gave her Lipitor. But look how many people do get Lipitor. Mm -hmm. One of the most popular uh, drugs are the statins. So would you, would you, do you think the doctors get a commission off of statins? Could be, I don't know, you know. But they definitely, there's definitely a lot of other. There's a lot of that shit going on. Right, right. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings. It's like, uh, what would you say, uh, almost the end of June 2016? 2016. It is the uh, 18th. June 18th. I got two, we got two more weeks. Saturday, June 18th, 2016. And when is the the infamous uh, Democratic National Convention? July. That should be July very, in Philadelphia. That, that should be very interesting. They are still counting the, brother, the super the city brother, the city of brotherly love, and cream cheese, and and cheese and, and cheese, cheese steak. steaks. Yeah. But you jabronis that use that cheap processed crap on your Philly cheese steaks, we're talking about Velveeta uh, and cheese whiz. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> it is cheap it. garbage. It is processed. Love it. it is not cheese. Real cheese. This guy will say anything opposite of what I say, which is refreshing because it makes for an interesting talk show. But anyway, uh, uh, the delegates, the super delegates, which they are sick and tired of, uh -huh. have not all been accounted for. They have not made their decision because, because of the stupid system with the delegates. Hillary hasn't clinched the delegate count, the super delegate count. She, she, we all know she cheated. It was proven. Hey, WikiLeaks or, or, or some other hackers sent all the information to Europe. The French newspaper came out with it. Certified, bona fide, proven. Bonafide? The, bonafide. Bonafide. That the DNC with the, with the Hillary campaign has rigged the election against Bernie Sanders. It was proven. I'm not sure what city it was. We in more than one but location, though. They, they, they have to audit. Arizona kind of proved it. They have to audit five percent of the computer votes to make sure everything is copacetic. California ain't copacetic. I don't know what's going on there yet. They were still counting. Well, uh, well, hey, New York. I'm sure. Uh, hey, when you look at the state of New York and you only see the city going for Clinton. And everybody else went for Sanders uh, and you look at the city and you look at all the city politicians like uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio who I thought was progressive but I guess not uh, Charlie Rangel all those city folk you know endorsing Hillary and then you have Wall Street and you have all the you know the Goldman Sachs and, the, and the, all the all the scumbags of Manhattan Big money people. Anyway, I don't know what city it was. Yeah. 
but what they do is they call normal average people to be auditors. What? Auditors to audit the votes. Normal average people are knuckleheads. Don't say that. They're the ones who found the problems. Oh. The council didn't find them. Maybe the council didn't want to find them. That's exactly correct. So, what happened? When they found problems, the people working for the state or whatever, they erased what was so it would agree with the machine. And then, when the auditors, the average persons, were explaining to the council what went on, one woman on the council says, Are you a professional auditor? <laughs> In other words, to try to denigrate her results. But, but. Okay? But. It, the it, results were the results. There was voter fraud. Now, in another state, must have been one of the uh, small states, there was like uh, 18, 18 delegates only. But Bernie wins the freaking state. Bernie gets seven delegates, and Hillary gets 11. He won the freaking state! They are, they have it rigged so Hillary Clinton is being handed the victory on a silver platter it is it is so obviously rigged yeah. that apparently apparently only people in other countries can, can see, see it. it and understand it because Americans cannot seem to to they can't see what is before their eyes they can't see what 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 is before their eyes they can't see that the person that uh, that they're supporting and, and listening to because I wouldn't listen to her, you know, is a crook. And the DNC, the whole party is crooked. Yeah, these same things happened to Trump. T Trump was getting screwed yeah. by the uh, Republican Party, too. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, Ted Cruz, you know, the, who's left? Ted Cruz and, and John Kasich. Nobody, nobody left. Kasich, Kasich, oh, you mean they got, let's see, kaput. They're out. They'll they're try out, to. But, what, but there's a bunch of Republicans that have gotten together now that want to dump Trump at the uh, convention. You see, the way America, the way the United States works now is that, like, nobody has, there's no scruples or ethics, or, nobody has any remorse for for cheating and ill-gotten gains. Oh no, no nobody uh, greed feels, is good. It, it, it's like, a, it's, it, it's like, you take pathological liars and sociopaths. Machiavelli. Because Hillary's not the only one, you know. That, that's, that fits that description. You oh, take wow. the establishment people that are that are pathological liars and sociopaths and uh, are pure pure selfishness and and they just want to rig everything. So it's like it's like a a, a shell game or a three card monte where the person conducting it is cheating mm -hmm. and and uh, or or a slot machine. That never ever pays out, ever, and the money the money keeps on emptying em emptying down a chute into a, into a vault underneath the casino. You know, like like nobody ever wins ever, and you, know? you don't want to change these things. The people you don't vote for the guy who's gonna try to change those things. Now I'm not saying there are not legions and hordes of loyal Bernie supporters that get it. Oh no, they're out there, without a doubt. There's a lot of them. But every time the Bernie supporters and Bernie Sanders <clears throat> tries, every time they try, there's always a new uh, monkey wrench getting thrown into, into, the, uh, into, the, into yeah. the engine. And you know, there's always a new sabotage coming up from the establishment. They're, you know, they're always it's pure dishonesty in its worst form, but they just don't want, they don't want to, um, to give up the, um, what they have, what they have, uh, um, 
the ill-gotten gains that they re got. Yeah, just sitting on their ass stealing taxpayers' money. Yeah. You know, I mean, to put it in layman's terms, sitting like a monarchy, sitting on your ass stealing taxpayers' money, and in, in this case, the middle class. I have seen all sorts of numbers and polls as to which candidate is ahead in November's presidential election. But there are two statistics I haven't seen. One is what percentage of the electorate has made its final decision? The second is what percentage of people registered to vote will actually do so? The most important question voters must answer next November is a very simple one. Which candidates for president and for any other office would do the best job of stopping the terrorist attacks that have been happening recently in America? Oh, everything's got to be about terrorism in the Middle East. Like, you yeah, know, I think we about went the, through yeah. that with George W. Yeah, Bush, yeah, didn't for, we? Yeah, 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 yeah. The the, um, N the NSA and the the uh, 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 the uh, home security uh, organization that he created. Uh, um, yeah, that that didn't really work that well. Um, forget about homeland the homeland security. Is a boom. The homeland security. Forget about forget boom. about the economy. Forget about. You know, no, uh, no jobs, and uh, you know, forget about the right. pe people that are destitute. It's those terrorists yeah. over there. Gotta worry about. It. I gotta worry about the terrorists. The terrorists, uh, yeah, immigration. We gotta keep them out. But uh, build a wall, and all, you know, forget about the people that are suffering that already live here. They're worried about starting new wars and and keeping old wars going overseas. So it's all about the military industrial complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Good business. You heard what Tillery said. Yeah. But that but when, that but that's like a priority to the establishment. Yes, so. it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, Barbara Boxer, another establishment democrat endorsing Hillary Clinton. I don't know what some say Pelosi. I I don't know what Yeah, Pelosi too. She decided to go with Hillary Clinton. All of them do as far as the Democratic Party is concerned. Harry Reid, they're all. Yeah, Barack Obama, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Barack Obama's out there on his stumpy, you know, stumping. Yeah. You think it's because of the, uh, the entities that funded their campaigns? Well, Possibly. Bingo! Bingo! In other words, basically in layman's terms, the, the sellouts. They got the bribe. They got the bribe. They took the bribe, That's and they stuffed the bribe in their pocket. And now they have to pretend that they will not do what the briber wants them to do, so they can get elected. Oh, like, and then they do it. Like Hillary's bullshit about, oh, I do what I want. I don't do yeah. what Wall Street tells oh, me. Yeah. I don't do what Goldman Sachs tells me what they do. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Have you today? The brouhaha about Donald Trump's candid language is nothing new. It is ingrained in the political DNA, which was started way back with the John Adams Federalists and Thomas Jefferson Republicans. In the presidential election of 1800, when Adams lost to Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton played the part of Mitt Romney. Although both Adams and Hamilton were Federalist Party members, the latter relentlessly attacked Adams because of the president's move to make peace with France, which threatened to wage war on the young United States of America. Oh yeah, hey, I thought France was buddy buddy with the young United States of yes, America. Yes, yes they were. They helped them in the in the revolution. They did they, they did. And then they changed their mind, I guess. Romney is jealous of Trump 
period. <laughs> Too bad. Adams defended himself a la Trump by calling Hamilton a bastard. Which was true, by the way. They used to challenge each other to duels back then. And an alien. Which was also true because he was born in Nevis in the Caribbean. The same language seems to be so negatively accepted now. Whereas for far too long, we have been truly gagged by political correctness. Political correctness is the affliction of hypocrites. It is used by dishonest people to camouflage the truth by wrapping it with a holier-than-thou cover. This will be a tough choice, but in light of what President Obama did to weaken America and Hillary Clinton's decision to defend this weak president and cling to his coattails, we really need to decide who can make the world respect America again? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've gotten used to Donald Trump, uh, uh, his mannerisms. And Trump is Trump. You know what I mean? He was always that way. He was always colorful and, uh, you know, uh, ostentatious, outspoken. He is what he is, yeah, you know, uh, but, but you know what, even though he's a lunatic and, and egomaniacal, he usually tells it like it is, like in other words, he's not like a, like a, like a, like a two-faced, sneaky, slithering, snake in the grass, backstabbing, you know, he's not like Hillary Clinton, he usually tells you up front what he thinks, and that part I have to respect. How Donald Trump became a candidate for presidency of the United States is scary. Oh, he's an entertainer. Americans like that. I'm amazed that he has such a following. His latest comment that Doblin, one of the edit, uh, writers for the, uh, this particular newspaper, wrote about, Oh, look at my African American over there! <sighs> is also scary. Well, you know, Donald Trump appeals to people that are a angry, frustrated, and most of all, racist. You know, yeah, they, they the, the, the they, base of the Republican Party. He appeals That's to right. them, and, and they like his outspokenness about what they, how they feel and what they think. He, right. he, they, he, in other words, they don't feel inhibited. To, that, to keep it inside. But that is like 35% of the party. Now, if he yes. wants to win the presidency, he has to appeal to independents and the, in the general election. That's not going to happen. And that's not going to happen not gonna too happen. well, because he's lost women, he's lost African Americans, and he's lost the Hispanics. Yeah. He's well, totally he, unfavorable. Yeah, to well, I, I was talking about the vote, the votes. So, I mean, you, you know, know, more women vote than men, you know. Yeah. No, he'll get plenty of chicks, Donald Trump, you know. No, he won't. No, I don't. I don't mean in the election. I mean if he oh. wanted to have a, a. He's already had a bunch of them. A rendezvous. If and three want. marriages. What the hell do you want with the guy? Yeah, I mean, you know. Well, he should ask uh, just to see if they'll take her. He should ask uh, Sarah Palin and Bristol Palin if they would go to bed with him. You know, uh, uh, and then uh, give uh, give them both jobs in the White House to uh, taking dictation. The only job Palin needs in the White House is cleaning the toilet. You like that dictation? Where's my levity bells, man? Good thing that the the put the the the, the, the scaredy cat is not in. I don't think the scaredy cat is in the house, is he? His larger than life ego is not going to make America great again. We don't need to make America great again. It already is. Well, his his uh, his his uh, interpretation of great is probably military strength and you know bombing people and trade deals. Yeah, in which he is very correct because every trade deal we ever make you get screwed benefits the other country, not ours. Everyone. Oh, you're absolutely right. Every single one. Every one. You're, yeah. 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 
Trump's racist comments will have the opposite effect and cause the country to go backwards, not forward. The shooter in Orlando was born in Queens, New York. So Donald Trump's calling for an immigration ban <laughs> would have done nothing oh, to stop what happened in the nightclub. No, what happened was domestic terrorism by by an American born uh, by an American citizen of of uh, Islamic uh, descent. Middle According East to descent. Trump. Our president doesn't know what he's doing. What a dreadful comment for him to make and for the rest of the world to hear. Finding and taking out Osama bin Laden matters not to Trump? And is it just possible that the rise of radical Islam increased after President George W. Bush's invasion in Iraq? In 2004, yeah. Well, he wants restitution for the people who died in the in the in the nightclub. I guess he wants. He's trying to find, a, you know. Uh, Perhaps Trump will try to be. Excuse me. To try, to tie, Obama to that blunder as well. Republicans have already. I think John McCain. Yeah, he's he blaming Obama for the. The Orlando shooting, yes. Yeah, they're even accusing Obama of, I guess, secretly sending arms to ISIS or helping Obama ISIS. Obama is bombing them, which is uh, a, a strategy I don't uphold. No, I think... I think the you can't get rid of them with airplane bombs. I, I think wiping... The, the part of the, the the region off the face of the earth is a good way to make keep them quiet. Yeah, but the trouble is there are innocent people there where they are. So the only way you can really do it is to have uh, Navy SEALs or whatever, you know, SEAL teams or whatever, and pop them off one by one. What's, or use them drones see, the drones like you're doing. The problem, He's killed over 2,000 right, of them already. The, the problem is, let, let's take... Leaders. Let's take... Um, the monarchy that rules Saudi Arabia, right? There are, I'm sure, the people of an Islamic country that tolerates this kind of rule. I'm sure they greatly outnumber the extremists that are ruling their country. Why do why do the people, if, if, if there's not a problem with their way of thinking, how, how come the people tolerate? No they don't power. rebel. You just saw it with Bernie Sanders. Pa people don't want revolution. The, they don't want change. The pacifists, yeah. You know, even though they bitch against it, they still uphold the status quo. Well, it, I don't think. See, I don't think the the Bernie Sanders people are are don't have any fight in them i think they have a, a no a, that's not i'm blaming they're very angry they have a lot of fight in them they just don't know what to do because it's like no 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 i'm not blaming them i'm blaming the people who did not vote for bernie the people who choose not to vote for bernie really? like in other words a minority person choosing hillary clinton is like a poor person that lives in a shack in Kentucky voting for Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. It's like you're shooting yourself in the foot. Right. Hillary Clinton brings nothing. I got to talk like Bernie Sanders out with my hands. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to put your hand down and probably point with the... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah I, I always talk with something. my hands anyway. Yeah, I talk with the shillelagh. I'll use that. As long as I don't knock over anything. Hillary Clinton brings nothing, nothing, I gotta do this, nothing to the table for poor people and minorities. Okay, Bernie's the one who cares about workers that are on strike, because he marches with them. He'll, uh, Bernie Sanders cares, cares about civil rights, because he marched with them back then, and got arrested for being a part of it, the protest. Mm -hmm. So, 
I mean, Hillary Clinton. Hillary, Hillary grew up in a in a upscale uh, Chicago suburb. Hillary uh, 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 campaigned for Barry Goldwater, a an Arizona Republican. Hillary hasn't hasn't uh, physically done anything really to help. I mean, what has she done to help minorities, poor people? Or even women. Break up the banks, they, 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 all of this stuff that Bernie put out there yeah. that needs to be done. Yeah. Oh, the she, only ones that she came around on are the ones she was forced to by Bernie. Oh, twelve dollars an hour instead of fifteen. It's unacceptable. Yeah, unacceptable. But, but she, that was she the best it. she could do. And she oh, and 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 the 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 kids. No, no. You you well, you won't have to pay that much, but you're still going to pay for your goddamn loan to go to school. Oh yeah, no. She and wants it. She wants to keep things private. That's talk. correct. She yeah. wants Hillary Clinton wants to keep things and make more things yes, private. Yes. Pri let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. Yeah. She wants to keep things and make more things privatized. Yeah. She wants you to pay out of pocket for everything. Yeah. That, that's not a progressive. No. What she's for is not a, a, a representative of a, a progressive or a liberal at all. It was, she is a Republican disguised as a Democrat. And in this case, the Democrats have become just like the Republicans. Yeah, that's correct. Okay? Except they're, they're more... Uh, they, they get their money from the same people. Yes. Yes. People. So if the if if the woman doesn't bring anything to the table for you, oh, she's bringing a female to the White House. Oh, big deal! You oh, you want to make history? Hey, yeah. you made history in 2008, didn't you? Having the first black man in, in the White House. Yeah. He we turned. We didn't get the change. Huh? We didn't get the change he promised. Yeah. That when he when Barack Obama ran for president, he ran. As a very progressive and Demo change. Democrat, that and we could change, believe. change yeah. didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. No, he could have. He could have got a lot done the first two years when the Democrats had total control of everything. Didn't happen. Eight years went by. He became more corporatist, more establishment. And that's that's your history. That's your first black man more, in the White House. More impotent because he couldn't get nothing done. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No. Okay? Because of the House. Now, the Senate. now, think of a, think about this little time machine talk. If Barack Obama made good on his all his progressive promises and did a lot in the first two years of being in office. Then he would have had a reputation mm -hmm. to to base uh, uh, all those you, you know the elections that that put Republicans in the Congress and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now he would have had a track record. Mm -hmm. So when the Democrat runs against, let's say, a Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. or a Paul Ryan, they can always say. Look at what our party has accomplished. Mr. Barack Obama has done this, that, and the other thing. Okay, now you have a solid foundation. You have a track record. And then, maybe then, the Republicans would not have taken control of the House and Senate. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he had two years as proving grounds to, to prove it, to do it. He didn't do it. That's it, plain and simple. And the Democrats that were elected, that were controlled, didn't do anything either. I know who was in charge of the Democrats. And I believe was it the House or the Senate? Nancy Pelosi. She was Speaker of the House, House. right? Nancy Pelosi. Every word out of her mouth. Bipartisanship compromise. Bipartisanship. She could have started, gotten the ball going, and say. Barack, Mr. President, let's get these. Let's get everything you said in the campaign rolling. We're ready to vote on it. We're ready to go. Oh no, everything was bipartisanship. Bipartisanship. Forget it. The two-party system was probably corrupt from day one. Day one. Time for lunch. Day two. <laughs>
We're going to break for lunch. You'll be joined by William H. Morrow, William Hamilton Morrow III, to be exact, our voiceover artist, <coughs> along with How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses, and then we will return with the balance of our show. I do apologize for the different lighting, but I think you'll be able to see what's going on. It's like that, uh, remember that guy who they fired, it was a warehouse, uh, men's warehouse? Hey, no. you're gonna like this suit. No, wait a minute. No, you're gonna... You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the way you look. I guarantee it. Was that it? You're gonna like the way you look. You're gonna like the way you look. Yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah they should have kept him. Yeah. You know, they got rid of the Dos Equis guy. Yes, they did. The most interesting man alive. In what? World. Well, what? he ain't more interesting anymore. Maybe they, they, maybe they got cheap and greedy. Maybe they want to, they don't want to pay these. That's what happens. They don't want to pay them. Contract one out. Motherfucker. And they want more money. They don't want you anymore. No, nah, he became a star. His agent yeah. probably wanted double, triple what he was getting. There you go. And the residuals, he probably wanted more, to, more of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greed, greed, American corporate America, greed. Never ends and never ends. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. All right, <clears throat> we're back. Hold on for a second there, brother. Thank you, William Hamilton Morrow the third, for doing promo. Um, <clears throat> Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, I uh, received um, an email from a gentleman in um, from northern New Jersey named Harvey. Hey, Harvey. Harvey. And uh, he is, he has a pending social security disability case. Um, he, uh, he has uh, his doctors, he had his doctors fill out the questionnaire, so you know, he's got ammunition on his side to, to support his case. Uh, just in, I mean, he, he still has to go to this hearing at the uh, federal courthouse in Newark, New Jersey, ah! in September. Uh, but it's not 
sometimes they don't require that if the person has sufficient amount of uh, backing from their doctors. So he, um, aside from that, he had he had two uh, appointments with the social security doctors, and you know how they are. You know they. they they basically are on the side of the government. They're on the side of Social Security. Mm -hmm. Because anything that has to do with uh, getting money from either the state or the federal government, they throw all kinds of roadblocks at you. And by default, they turn you down the first time because most people don't pursue anything. They don't fight for anything. So. Mm -hmm. Harvey went to his first uh, social security doctor, who happened to be a psychiatrist. I think the second one is uh, uh, orthopedist, uh, physical therapy center. It's the second one. Anyway, he goes to the shrink. Now, the shrink says to him, well, what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you an IQ test. Mm -hmm. Now what the hell does an IQ test, what the hell does a person's intelligence have to do with any psychiatric or emotional afflictions is beyond me. I mean, I don't care if you could recite the Encyclopedia Britannica forwards and backwards. It has, that has no connection with psychiatric disorders or or e emotional disorders, symptomatic, you know, in his case, he the man gets severe anxiety attacks, uh, uh, depression, and insomnia. So, what the hell does his intelligence have to do with this? Well, I don't know. He didn't know either. But my hunch is maybe if he has a, a normal or high IQ, maybe the government might use it against him and say, uh, "Oh, this guy's smart. Oh, he could, he could, he could go to, he can go to work." Uh -huh. But it has nothing to do with the affliction. Just like, just like when the government told him a while back, "Whoa, you could sit, you could sit be, uh, on a chair behind a desk." What does that have to do with stress triggering a major panic attack? Ooh. It has nothing to do with the amount of stress a person has. You're sitting behind a desk. That means you have an office job. That doesn't mean there's it's low stress or no stress. It makes no sense. Anything that comes out of the mouths of government makes either very little or no sense. It's like as, as ridiculous as pissing away trillions of dollars on a military aircraft that is defective, that cannot be used. It, it's, it's, it's preposterous. So, I, you know, I told him, I says, you know, doesn't make any sense. Sitting behind a desk has nothing to do with, with uh, an affliction that is triggered by stress. Sitting behind a desk has nothing to do with it. How much weight, if you could twist, how much weight can you hold in one place, you know, or whatever. In this case, an IQ test has nothing to do with your problem. Doesn't make sense. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell the story about Harvey. Uh, good luck to you, Harv. You know, you, you have a lawyer. Uh, Social Security Disability uh, uh, representation, which is good. I mean, they don't do a, he a hell of a lot of legwork. Not for for the twenty five percent that they keep. If if really? you win, it, well, in this case, I, he told me it was like twenty five. Uh, I don't believe him. Yeah, I yeah. don't believe him. It's usually thirty. Lawyers usually get thirty. Maybe even 33 today. Who maybe, knows? Maybe there's maybe there's a little tiny disclaimer that says, "Oops, we forgot to add five more percent." It's really 30 percent. Could be. Describe. I don't trust anything. Could be. Could be. I don't trust anything with capitalism. Uh, nothing. Nothing do I trust. You cannot trust like what Conan, what Arnold Schwarzenegger said in Conan the Barbarian. Is you, there is no man, woman, or beast you can trust 
or you can thrust your sword. Uh -huh. See this conch? Everything we talk about politically is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. You most likely can see the conch, even with the poor lighting. Okay, back to the readings. Are you old enough to remember the good old days when you bit into a peach and the juice rolled down your chin what a slob. And the texture, taste, and aroma were something to inhale and salivate over? Use a napkin if you're gonna you're gonna trickle juice down your face and start salivating. Use a napkin, you slob. Yes, I remember the days when fruit had lots of flavor and they were sweet. They weren't mealy and mushy and, and they did not taste like cardboard. I remember those days. Uh, we, I just had uh, some peaches, and they were crap. Melacaton in Spanish. Peach. Melacaton. If you are not old enough to enjoy those sensations, then you are surely missing something great. Today's fruit is nowhere near delicious. Fruit looks like it has been grown in a wax museum. Uh, uh, yeah, because there's wax on them. <laughs> it is shipped in refrigerated trucks. And when fruit is refrigerated, it can no longer ripen. It, they're probably picked uh, prematurely. Just like tomatoes. You never put tomatoes in the refrigerator. Well, tom tom tomatoes that are Tomatoes that are sold in in supermarkets are picked green. They're not vine ripened, unless you happen to see an overpriced tomato where it says certified organic vine ripened non-GMO tomato, and then you pay through the nose for it. You know that's one thing. But no, no, no. Well, oh, but I don't see my beef steaks, do I? Beef steak tomatoes. Now, no. Be very wary of fruit grown south of the border ah! in, in let's say Chile or, or, Ar or Argentina because they they still use DDT you know the the bastards that had to had all that DDT in the United States when it became illegal the, oh they couldn't take a loss oh no they sold it overseas and the Latin American uh, agricultural industry bought the DDT and they might still have more left. I mean, really wash your produce. Why do we have to buy avocados from Mexico when we grow our own? Speaking of trade deals. Avocados we'll grow uh, in, in the American Southwest. Yeah, we get them from California. Including uh, California, you right. know, near the Mojave Desert. They will grow in Florida. Um, so why you got to import them from Mexico? Because uh, American companies want slave labor. They don't want to no, pay. That's the deals we make. It's the deals that which I'm Mr. Trump is bitching about. He understands that. Part. So the 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 deals uh, is that kind of like NAFTA? It is NAFTA. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's NAFTA? Yeah. Oh, there, there's that, that word again, Clinton. The Clinton dynasty that Which all gave you... gave us the trade deficit with Mexico. NAFTA. The ripening process brings out the flavor and aroma that we used to experience in the olden days. Yes, Maduros ripened, ripened, the vine ripened fruit. Back then, before refrigerated trucks, the grocer had to account for fruit that perished while on display. Rotten fruit would pile up on the side as customers rummaged through the produce. With refrigeration, Farmers pick fruit when it looks good and ship it to the grocery. Remember that hippie on Star Trek? 
I was singing that song, playing his guitar, you know, eat all the fruit and throw away the rind. Hey, 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 brother. The grocer can then sell it to you, the customer. A perfect looking piece of fruit. Keep on, you keep on reminding me of when Kramer was banned from the uh, farmer's market on Seinfeld. Beaches, nectarines, and to a lesser degree plums follow suit. The burden of throwing out rotten fruit has been shifted from the grocer to the consumer. Cantaloupes go from cold to rotten. Because of look how far they're being shipped. Well, hey, year, years ago, back in the day, we had what is called local uh, pr uh, f uh, f food production. Locally. Produced locally and bought locally. Yes. When is the last time you ate a good cantaloupe? You know what? A good cantaloupe is like is like heaven, man. It's it's heavenly. It, a good cantaloupe, fine, ripe. Well, just a good cantaloupe that's ripe. Even if it's not vine ripening, a cantaloupe is just a wonderful fruit. It's very nutritious, too. Apples are a different story. There are just so many apples we can eat after a good harvest. So the rest are put into a controlled environment where they sit until needed. Well, yeah, you have the, the apples that are uh, uh, table quality as a hand fruit as a hand fruit and then you have all the subpar apples that become apple cider, apple sauce, apple juice, so on and so, apple wine. And while the apple may look good, the inside has become mealy. That's right. I, right I, now. I've seen that with peaches. I would not buy any apples. Right. If fruit feels cold to you, you are at the mercy of our refrigerated truck delivery system. Apples are out of season uh, in the in the uh, northern um, hemisphere. In, the, in, in North America, apples, Apple, yeah. manzana in Spanish, manzana, apples, are out of season. Now if you get apples from um, Chile, which is experiencing uh, they will be experienced, they are going from fall to winter, so this is most likely the season for apples and pears down there, because we're going from spring to summer, so it's the opposite, south of the equator. Mm -hmm. Be very careful with those apples. I mean, I'm not saying that they're bad apples or that they don't have a good flavor, but make sure you really soak them well have put a dash of white vinegar and some baking uh, baking soda, uh, a little dash of hydrogen peroxide with apples because you know what? Deer love apples and then the deer go through the orchard and they crap on, you know, that's E. coli. So you, you might want to put a little hydrogen peroxide also. Put it in a big bucket, let it soak, and eh, maybe 30 minutes or so and rinse it well. That's a good homemade wash for your produce. Those of us who are old enough remember Muhammad Ali during his fighting days and witnessed his conscientious objection to the Vietnam War. We marveled at the personal sacrifice his decision wrought upon him. And we remembered his humanitarian presence, <coughs> even when he was stricken with debilitating Parkinson's disease. But the most enduring and heartfelt legacy that was left by the champ was his continued eloquence in his true following of the tenets of the Quran and the beauty and peace of Islam. He spoke loudest in his deeds when the words were no longer available to him. 
There has never been a time in this country more pressing and in more need of the purest example of the Muslim faith. May Ali rest in that knowledge. Oh, he was, he was, a, he was a, uh, a, one of the finest role models. Well, I don't see Fox News for Islam, and he's an American hero, as far as I'm concerned. I don't see Fox News uh, and the others uh, making a separation between extremist Islam and peaceful Islam that Ali represented. They don't make it's all Islam, Islam. It's all a war against Christianity. Our Christianity. Then you have idiots like Sarah Palin saying that uh, Muhammad Ali is proof that all black Muslims are violent. See? Now how the hell do you prove that? Why? Because he was a prize fighter? <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> he said that's what he did for a living. <laughs> he, he wasn't a violent man. You know, um, um, what was that banner I saw? Oh, yeah. It had to do with this. Richard Nixon had to resign from the presidency for the Watergate scandal, which was a tiny fraction of what Hillary Clinton has done concerning her emails, but Richard Milhouse Nixon had to resign, and Hillary Clinton is like being protected. By, uh, I don't, I don't want to say the Republican establishments, but let's just say the Obama administration, and uh, uh, what's her name, Loretta Lynch. Uh, she's she's the head of the FBI. No, Justice Department. Justice Department, yeah, they're they're protecting. Call me as the head of the FBI. Oh, but Richard Nixon, he had to resign for the little for that little thing with the taping, Watergate taping. I mean. Do I see a double standard here of political correctness? Perhaps, you know, but for some reason, Tricky Dick had to leave the presidency, but Hillary is just, she's just made of Teflon. Everybody seems to be protecting Hillary Clinton. Why is it that we, the people, continue to elect individuals who do not represent us or share our values. Hey, good article. Conservative radio and television talk show hosts claim to believe in family values. But I can't, for the life of me, see how this is true. What does the Democrats believe in, this idiot? Don't Baby killing. Secular humanism. Well, I don't see anybody fighting for the little guy anymore well, in the Democratic Party. That's for sure. Well, the Republican candidate for president has made a series of racist comments since announcing his candidacy. Yet my representative in the state, Senate Gerald Cardinale, Republican of Demarest, says, I don't believe Trump has any racist tendencies. <laughs> uh, that's funny. The that mayor funny. of Montvale said Trump's comments were definitely racist. But he planned on voting for him. Even the Speaker of the House said Trump's recent comments about an American judge were the textbook definition of a racist comment. but. He nevertheless, nevertheless endorsed him for president. What I will not understand is how we got here. It used to be that a politician's primary responsibility was to the United States Constitution and the American people. Now it is about party loyalty and damn the public. That's what Elizabeth Warren did. Party loyalty and damn the public. I would like to know how these politicians explain their actions to their children. Racism will never be on my list of family values. Well, this is what I tell also, you know, um, 
um, um, lobbying groups with selfish agendas. It, the United States is supposed to be about its constitution and all inclusiveness. All you have to think all inclusive, not just only about uh, black issues or just about you know. Latino issues or Asian issues or gay issues, gay and lesbian issues like uh, like uh, what's his face? Uh, 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 Justin. Justin Dana Spears. Yeah. Justin Dana Spears, um, the it's member a of horse. member of our group, or a couple of our groups on Facebook. His profile is nothing but gay issues. Mm -hmm. What what's that the term he used? He used the term for what he does. I didn't catch it. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, his whole entire profile is only all gay. About gays, yes. Only gay. So like nothing Transgender. Transgender gay, but 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 nothing else. Nothing else. Like nobody else matters. I mean and, and this is how a lot of um uh, lesbians and feminists that are pr most likely lesbian uh, mm -hmm. that are still in the closet they want Hillary Clinton because they just care about getting that first woman in the White House female power right hey. selfish it's a selfish agenda well they forget that America is uh, about multiculturalism and uh, it is supposed to be all-inclusive and you have to think of what's good for the for most of the population of the country and the country, which includes the Constitution. You know, and they don't think that way now. And in case of uh, today's Democrats, they're not really thinking that way either, because they're only caring uh, caring about the party and those that butter their bread. Whoever's putting the butter on their bread is who they work for. So anyway. Bernie Sanders vowed Thursday night to work with rival Hillary Clinton. Oh no, here we go. To defeat Donald Trump. Oh no. But he refused to withdraw from the Democratic presidential race and still declined to endorse her. In a video message to supporters, oh, boy, oh, boy. Sanders said he would continue his political revolution to change the Democratic Party. Why? This ham campaign has never been about any single candidate. Why the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders? Why care so much about the Democratic Party? It is always about transforming America, he said. Clinton won a majority of the votes in the recently concluded primary season and the majority of the delegates and is expected to be nominated at the Democratic Convention in July in Let's Philadelphia. See. So maybe he'll come to his senses, Bernie Sanders, and forget about the Democratic Party. As the first woman chosen by a major party. Yeah, major, but not an honest party. Ooh. Well, Bernie Sanders, you are showing that you are a neo ultra liberal pacifist flower child hipster. You are still pandering to Madame uh, Secretary. Madam Secretary, with all due respect, as I. I quote you in the debates. You are kissing up to her because she's a woman. You are showing weakness. <clears throat> and um, I might just <clears throat> forget it and say, go with Jill Stein. That's it. Change of pace. Tomato pace. I'm in high school. I have a group of 10 friends. 
who are so close we often joke about being family. They share the same bed? We are generally a very happy group. But ever since the school year started, a guy, Steve, has been dating Catherine. Sounds like the show Friends, you know? It has recently come out that Steve is manipulative and abusive with her. And, and guess what? Because the, friend, the friendship pact is so close, everybody knows her business. And they all interfere. I know, I know what's going to happen. On numerous occasions, she has tried to break up with him. But he has threatened suicide. Oh, the old guilt trip. Since these arguments between them often happen in the middle of the night, she has often woken us all up to beg for help. Only to tell then tell us that things calm down. What's his problem? Or oh, what's their problem? Does it? You know, let's see if the, it comes out here. We have learned that Steve is bipolar. Um, and on medication. Uh, uh, well, evidently his medication needs to be tweaked. And it seems to be having no effect. Um, oh, it's having an effect all right. I'm only 16. I worry for Catherine's safety and everyone else's, but she won't break up with him because Steve threatened suicide. No. Recently, he had a meltdown in which he slammed his head against the ground head and bang. walls. Head banging. Screamed and cried. Shouldn't, um, And begged Catherine to change her mind. Shouldn't she... This was because she had picked a partner for a group project other than him. He seems extremely jealous of her friends. Yeah, they have very long and vicious fights over small things. And it is beginning to affect the rest of us. What should we do? Hmm. Interesting. I can't back off because they are in many of my classes. And talking to either of them has no effect. Why don't you talk to the dude and say, hey man, your medication's not working. You better go back to your doctor and tell him what's, what's been happening. This is frightening. This is Amy Dickinson's Sounds answer. like he needs my shillelagh therapy. And it is important that you and your other friends do something concrete. Right now. Yeah. Ram his head into the concrete. <laughs> I want you to skip your next class. Go to your school's counselor or dean of students. Tell that person everything you have reported in your letter. Intimate partner violence among teens is too common. A 2013 survey noted that 10% of high school students reported physical victimization and 10% reported sexual victimization from a dating partner in the 12 months before they were surveyed. Teens who experience abuse in high school are at risk for risky relationships later. A 2011 Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Nationwide poll found that 23% of females and 14% of males who ever experienced rape, physical violence, or first experienced some form of partner violence between 11 and 17 years of age. Really? That young? Stalking, the, does that include poking somebody with a, with a piece of celery? Stalk? Stalking? You must contact an adult to intervene. You and your friends are simply too young to stop this. But you should raise the alarm with your school counselor, your parents, and hers. 
for further support 24-7, text the Crisis Helpline at 741-741. Well, uh, I'm having Excuse a hard me. time seeing the shadow on the sundial. Water out there. But I think we're done. Oh, well, we might have another one. Oh, you got another one? Nothing big, though. Oh, yeah, this is a good one here, too. A good one. All right, one more. Some people believe sex with friends can turn a friendship into chaos. Uh, 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 e e it can eventually down the road, but it could be a lot of fun at the beginning. I don't believe it because I can remain a friend and still be there intimately. <laughs> because they want to keep on getting, they want to keep on getting laid by the. <laughs> I have a friend. I feel would be a good match because we are both very sexual and filthy minded. You mean a fuck friend? Fuck buddy. A fuck buddy. A, a booty call. <laughs> We continuously tease about it. I know it's only a joke, but I believe he's the type of person who would feel the friendship would be lost if we were intimate, or worse, uh, that's just an if we aren't compatible that's, that's in a, bed. That's a bunch of horseshit. Uh, when a girl says that to a guy, it'll ruin the friendship. That's To me, that's like a polite way of saying, no thank you, you know, not interested. Because if the opportunity is there and there's chemistry, the fuck buddy thing will take place. Can someone joke around so much about something and not want to do it? Ah, you'll do it. You'll do <laughs> it. The more you put it in your mind, it'll, it'll happen. Also, I'm not the type he would ever see himself with having sex with. Oh. Oh, she's not that good looking. And he says he can't believe he feels this way. Maybe she's got she got big jugs or she's uh you know, she maybe she Should has, we try it or leave it alone? She has a, a certain sex appeal about her, you know. I mean she might not be a raving beauty, but As know. it will only be sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and It's not like we're looking to fall in love. Uh well, uh, if one of them does, then somebody's going to get hurt. That's all. You have to. You have to make that agreement at the beginning. Men yeah. always say have to do that, that man. they would love to have a friend with benefits. It's true. But if it happens, uh. they can't handle it. Usually, the woman, because of the fe how the female is. Uh, composed of, you know, what they're made of, where their minds are, rather. Usually the female grows emotional attachments and cannot maintain the booty call, fuck buddy relationship. Usually they fall in love and everything. Which, you know, I mean, God, I mean, if if everybody was so free to have a, a booty call, fuck buddy, could you imagine the venereal disease that would be ah! flying around the human race, and 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 then and then and no marriage would last. I mean, no, uh, nobody would, nobody would get married because everybody would have friends slash with benefits, friendships with benefits. Then why? Buy the cow if you get the milk for free. You know Polyamory. Yeah. You know? You know what I mean? So Here's you, dear Abby's answer. Oh, she's got an answer. Short and sweet. In order to be friends with benefits, you have to have two people who are willing. The man you have described seems to be all that all hat and no cattle leave it alone all hat hat and, and no, no cattle cattle what does that mean it must be some uh, out west uh, you know phrase well is he willing to just be no he's joking about it all the time oh oh he mentions it more than once 
Well, well then it ready. can't. Then it can't be a joke. But he, he, but he makes it a joke. I guess so. He jokes about well, it. Well, the fact that he keeps on joking about it must mean that he's afraid. But she's not his type. But then why does he just tell the job? Can, can I just get a blowjob from you? It seems to be more that her. her. Face, her face would be down there. It seems to be more her that she don't want wanting to this situation than him. Oh, she wants. Comprende? Oh, she wants the yeah. booty call, fuck buddy, more than he does. That's what so, it seems. So to. he comes back at her, joking about it, but she's really not his type per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wants to have a little action. So the problem is that if she likes him more than he likes her, uh, she might me. start getting attached, and she might start with the celery stalking him because it's one-sided you know what I mean like it's gotta be you have to have an understanding that this is it friends with benefits have, that's it it can't go no farther than that you have to have two more pit people who are right. adults and you can't have you know a, you can't have your so-called friend with benefits uh, uh, getting jealous if you happen to meet someone that you want to be serious with and then you say look I'm giving up the lifestyle of friends with benefits they cannot go off in a tirade uh, of jealousy because they have to understand their role because you had an agreement with them so anyway that was a very interesting show <coughs> Um, I don't know what to tell you about the um, political campaign 2016. I mean, I hope that that article was a lie about only eight states allowing write-ins. I hope that Bernie Sanders is not so um, obsessed with getting Hillary Clinton to like him. And to save the Democratic Party, he seems to have a, maybe he has a thing with her. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know why he cares so much in uh, making friends and making, making mm -hmm. having a truce with Hillary Clinton. He had a second private meeting with Barack Obama recently. That's not a good sign. Then he, ha he supposedly has a meeting with Hillary Clinton, he, I think he had one last Tuesday. Bad sign, bad sign. Which means he's going to go easy on her, which is the wrong thing to do. Because she's going, she is, Hillary Clinton to Bernie Sanders is like Delilah was to Samson. She is like the succubus. Her intentions are ruthless. She is not interested in making nice, nice with him, and that, and that, and, and and there was proof throughout all the debates and the entire campaign. She proved that she's not interested in making nice, nice, playing footsie with Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders has this obsession with everybody coming together, arm in arm. I love you, you love me, Barney the Dinosaur, or Bernie the Dinosaur, Bernie the Dinosaur, sing Kumbaya. He's got this, this obsession, this hipster obsession that he needs to get rid of. Otherwise, his uh, grassroots love revolution is going to fizzle out, and it's just going to continue being the dream of the Green Party, and Jill Stein will take over, and, and then we'll hear about the grassroots revolution for the next four years as we are going down into the abyss with uh -huh. with either Trump or Hillary Clinton, God forbid, uh -huh. running the country. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh. You know, just as well, everything looks macabre and dismal because the content of the show was macabre and dismal. Macabre. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.